You did some date. You went down the rabbit hole on Devin Funches. I, I, you find? and I didn't. I went down the rabbit hole and I found something I didn't want to find. Yeah, about how good he was against the division. You know how big I am about that. I know that's you, a big thing. For you you. got to take care of the division first. So Devin Funches in 2017 had a stat line in three games. I didn't see what he did against the Bills because it's irrelevant. Right. Right. Um, hold that thought. Can I have two large double doubles and an angel cream donut? Anything else? That's all. Five twenty-seven. Yahtzee. Why am I the only fatty that eats now? Because I eat before. I got all. You're making me self-conscious. You got the, the, the subs subscribers got me self-conscious because I don't. I eat before we go on. <laughs> well, they're sitting here watching you pound four different color monsters. Hey, you don't have week. to watch this again to edit it. I look at you when I. When I kill a box of 10 Timbits in eight bites, it's not, not healthy. <laughs>
Yeah. And you, I don't think you'd have to overpay him to get there. Funches? No. Uh, Funches right now, and this is off SpotTrack.com. Uh, they do the market value. Projected, they, yeah. Yeah, they think he's worth four years at 35.6 because of his age. He's only 24. Uh, yeah. There's no way that he's only signing really? a four-year deal. Really, 24? I feel like he's been in the league forever. I know. <laughs> There's no way he's signing just a four-year deal. It's not going to happen. No. So because of his age, free agency is going to tack on. So the deal is going to be bigger than that. But, but they're looking at a base of about nine a year. I, I'm not. That's you not know, hateful. So, well, you're looking at. I mean, if you're going to sign Funches, you're realistically looking at a five to six year deal. Between at thirty. 50, yeah, between honestly between forty five and fifty five million dollars, like in that range. Five to six years, forty five to fifty five million dollars, right around. Right. No. As far as the fan base is concerned, is that something that we need to be concerned with? I don't know, man. Because, you know, you don't have a oh, is that what we're going to do? we got well, a, we, another I, KB in here. You make a great point because the pressure was taken off of Funches as being a number one because you had McCaffrey, who was their number one. Really, McCaffrey was their number exactly. one receiving yep. target. Yep. So, so Funches, as, but while he played the role of number one wideout, wasn't really the biggest offensive threat on that team. So can you pay $9 million to a guy who has never been the most dynamic player on his team? I don't know. Well, do we do we know that, though? Do we initially... Yeah. We know McCaffrey is, is a dynamic player. I'm not denying... I'm not going to... I'm not losing my mind just yet. Right, But okay. the fact that Funches was there, do you think that opened up things for McCaffrey? No, I don't think so. This is not chicken or the egg thing? No, I don't think so. McCaffrey, I mean... I'm just putting it out there because it's interesting to talk about. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, you know, even last year, right? Uh, not not 2018, but even 2017, when they got rid of KB, yeah. right? His numbers weren't staggering. They were and that they was were McCaffrey's better. rookie year. Yeah. So they I mean, were better than when KB was there, though. Right. Oh yeah. Of course they would. I would expect them to approve. Well, but. no. The thing that we always have a question with is that when a guy is not a number one and then becomes a number one. Usually they can't handle that role. Uh, Randall Cobb's a perfect example. Remember when Jordy oh, Nelson yeah. went out a couple yeah. years ago and Randall Could, Cobb was asked to be the number one, and everybody in Fantasyland jumped on him, myself included. Not uh, going not to exclude myself there, mm -hmm. and it was just a tire fire, a total tire fire. Yeah. And there's another guy, Randall Cobb, 29. I can't believe he's only 29. He's got a lot. He's, he's been run through the right arm. Yeah. I mean, he's been run through the right The thing about, no, uh, but the... My point about uh, Funches was that his numbers improved, which is something you don't normally see. Right. Yeah. It's, um, again, so. signing a number one wide receiver has to be about how dynamic a player they are because, again, they're not going to be getting nine targets a game. I just don't – they're not going to get nine to ten targets a game. They're going to get seven. So I think it's about how dynamic the player is, not necessarily how productive they are. Right? So is Funches a dynamic enough player – that he would command enough attention in seven to eight targets. When they signed Tevin Coleman, yes. <laughs> I love that point. I love that point. Yeah, I love that point. Um, people have been all over our page about Tyrell Williams. When you look at the free agent wide receivers, young guy compared to a lot of the free agent wide receivers, right? So Tyrell Williams is 26. He made $2.9 million last year. Track is estimating he's going to make 9.6 per year. I'm not... I know people are really interested in Tyrell Williams. I'm not. Right? I don't think... For the same reason we were just bringing up points, is when you, when you take a guy who's not a number one and make him a number one. Now, uh, your point aside with McCaffrey and Funches, okay? Right. But, the number one wide out on the team. Okay. Not the number one option. Allen. Yeah, it was Keenan Allen. Yeah, yeah. But um, <clears throat> it was Keenan Allen. And then your second option is Gordon running the ball. Uh -huh. And then, like, insert an another player here. Austin there. Eckler immediately after that. Eckler's yeah, so, phenomenal. He's a great, oh, he's yeah. a great player. We were talking about him a lot last year. He's a great player. Um, but you're the third option on that team as yeah. far as offensive weapons go. Right. Now you're going to go to a team where you're the number one. Yeah. I'm, We've seen a lot of guys who've left uh, New Orleans mm -hmm. because people thought they were dynamic. We've seen, yeah. you know, we've seen some guys um, who've left the various teams. I think Mike Wallace is another example. Well, you know, 
I'm I struggle to think of wide receivers that left the Chargers and did well. I really can't think of any. Like off the top of my head, in the last seven years, Chargers receivers that left the team and did fine. I I don't have any. Does, this, does so Allen's I, injury at the Pro Bowl then ratchet up the fact that LA will now sign the Williams? Or a greater need to sign Williams? I don't, they already have Mike Williams, so I think they're willing to die on that sword because that they drafted him. Yeah. I think I think they're willing to die on that sword. Um, I mean, I like, don't, don't get me wrong, I like Tyrell Williams, but I have a little trepidation about a guy who you're going to take as the third option in, in, in LA and I'll make him the top guy. Sure, yeah. Yeah, Can he I handle that. that responsibility? We don't know that. Yeah, we don't know. Even that. though Allen did have some injuries, how did Tyrell Williams perform when he was injured? Was was he a standout number one? Was he so so? Was you know? Plus, you still have a solid running game and a top flight quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, which you're going to be losing coming to Buffalo. Yeah, because um, you have a guy that's still learning. <laughs> until the Bills sign. Once again, yeah, once the Bills sign the running game. I really do feel like the attention to the running game is going to make the receiver signing more important. I think yeah, you got to figure out what you're doing in the run game. Period. The end. That will that will impact the performance of the receivers. I'm with you 100. percent Do you ever play Jenga? Yeah, of course. Okay. When you get down to that last one. Yeah. All right. Tevin Coleman. In my opinion, and you sold me on this, mm-hmm. is that last piece before everything falls down. If you pull that, if you get Tevin Coleman mm-hmm. and sign him. Everyone else, I think, will follow suit. I think there will be wide receivers that will want to come here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, even though there's been recent articles that people say even even overpaying players to come to Buffalo hasn't worked. You know, there's there's a weird thing about that. We covered this on previous episodes about this might have been back in the podcast days too. Now that yeah. I think of it, where we talked about um, the amount of money that players lose coming to New York State because the Jets and the Giants aren't New York State teams; they're in Jersey. So you have to pay New York State income tax in Buffalo. And that's, I mean, that's a massive difference between New York State and Miami and Vegas and some of these other places yeah. where, you, where you don't really have the state income taxes. Um, so there, there's a big difference. you got to pay players a little bit more. The Mario Williams contract had that written in. Like, that's how they were able to get him the deal signed was they accounted for the difference between state income tax and every other place. It was mm-hmm. crazy. Um, looking at other wide receivers that are available, Golden Tate. Golden Tate still makes the most sense to me because still makes no sense. The most sense. The most sense. Because he's well, he's thirty, right? He's coming off a deal where he made thirty-one mil over five years. He just left the Eagles, but Golden Tate has been a number one, right? So all those things that you talk about, where well, we don't know if he's ever been a number one. We're not really sure. Tate's been that. Right. Now the question is, is he willing to teach at this point in his career? Right, because he's thirty. He's still got two years left of relatively competitive football, and then anything after that is just bonus. Right, as far as that's concerned. Well, he's going to consider it the fact that he has not won a title. No. Or did he win one with Seattle? Oh. No, he wasn't. No. Ooh, maybe. Okay. If he, he has, have. if he has a ring, that's a big deal. Because whatever contract he signs next is the place he's going to retire. Yeah. You figure, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sign at 30. That's but bringing this discussion back full circle, we talked about Adam Humphreys. Mm-hmm. We're talking about being a slot guy. Yeah. You said Golden Tate has been a number one mm-hmm. at, in the slot. Right. So. <laughs> right. What kind of, uh, that does not push Zay Jones to the slot. No, it does not. And I, you know, you know, everybody on this channel knows that I support anything that moves Zay Jones into the slot. Like that's whatever you got to do. You're okay. all about moving players inside. Dawkins, Jones. Yeah. yeah, because they're not good where they are. <laughs> that's why I wouldn't have to have these crazy ideas if you know if they weren't bad. You're where hilarious they are. because you're always on offense. You're all about moving guys inside. On yeah. defense, you're about moving guys, guys outside. outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The one that I want to bring up before we move any further, and the comparison of Golden Tate, just to be fair, is when you look at market value, Pierre Garcon, Deshaun Jackson, Emmanuel Sanders, they're figuring his contract's going to be about 10 mil a year, right? 10.2, 10.3 is where, where Spotrac sees him. I really do agree with him. I think that's probably realistic. Right. Um, the one that I want to bring up, because you know it's going to come up, Chris Hogan's going to be a free agent again. No, he won't even come up. You don't think so? He's 31. 
We're what talking. Do you want? We're talking Buffalo, though. No, you don't think so. No. Nope. People have been pining for Chris Hogan for the last two to three years. I'm just. I. It's true. It's true. Let's get the band back together. Marshawn's 33. Let's bring him back. Where's Spiller? <laughs> Spiller coaching high school running backs right now. Like, let's get him back. No, no. I. I don't. I don't think he makes your offense better. I think. I think we're at a little bit of an impasse here because. Like, I look at Golden Tate and I say there's a possession receiver. That would be great for the Bills, right? To have a really solid possession receiver because I think that will expand Robert Foster's impact on the team, right? I look at Zay Jones, and Zay Jones isn't slow, but no. it could increase the impact of Zay Jones on this team. Okay, fine. It could, it could incre increase the impact of McKenzie on the team. All guys that are fast, right? So I, I look at somebody like Hoke and I say, look, possession receiver, right? How does how does signing Golden Tate versus signing Chris Hogan so different? Because they're exactly the same age. How is it so different? They both they all they are asked to play the slot. Like I just want to know why they're so different. On paper, it's they're the same. They're the same player. Belichick has kernel knowledge of Chris Hogan. Oh, here we go back to the division again. Just, come on. Are you serious? Listen, I'll let you Google Drew Bledsoe about guys he's willing to let go and then ends up defeating multiple times. Listen, all right, not Golden Tate, not Chris Hogan. Like, in your, in, for, your, for your Chris Hogan debate, here's what I'll say. I see your Chris Hogan, and I raise you a 33-year-old Jordy Nelson. Oh, come on. You know I trade for Jordy Nelson like that. Play the outside. <laughs> he plays the outside. 